So there is actually a line and sometimes you can see it. There will be no data in that little edge right there. So you don't have to worry about it too much from that standpoint, but I'm just trying to make sure you understand whatever you use for double face foam tape is only to make it springy, to make it bounce. And you're adding that in to keep that apart, okay? And so that's your goal, is to build this this way so that you can pull the entire set of heads out without creating any pressure or doing anything. It's just gonna keep them apart. The heads actually will not be touching the drive once you've put your tool in. They'll actually be just barely floating over the platter and you can actually slide your heads in and out freely. They'll actually not touch anything until you remove this. Everybody good so far? All right, so I'm gonna show you how to build these. And then, so again, that's your whole goal, is to get this out and be able to hold it in your hand. So on your desk, underneath the books, there's a static mat. That's where you're going to rebuild your drive. Then, once you've gotten your drive rebuilt and it's work, it, you think it's functional, you think, I want to try it, you're going to go to the deep spar, and you're going to look at the top of the card. You're going to pick the adapter and interface that you need. You're going to plug it into there. And then you're going to start the steps that we talked about on the deep spar. DDI to boot, get into the deep spar, F11, and then power on, wait for drive seat complete, drive ready, hit rescan, and that's where you'll stop. You will not leave that moment until you see anything that says my model, my serial number, and my LBA blocks. You must have five things for that to work. Drive seat complete, drive ready, model, serial number, and your LBAs. If you do not have all three of those things, you will not be able to hemorrhage that drive. If you do see those three things, you can jump up and down and then hit F5, like hit enter, enter for OK, hit F5 and see if you get green. Then you can be happy. If you do not see green, then you need to go back to the previous screen and we're going to make adjustments and we're going to work with you. And so Natalia has come to help and run around with you guys while I'm doing it and she's doing it. We'll be able to kind of get everybody working on all the stuff. So. Let me use a bag, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, I have a bag and I'm going to ask everybody to come up here for two seconds while I make head combs. So everybody can see what it's supposed to look like. Now this is where that page two in the book had a picture that was the sizes of what I had previously made. So, uh, so basically you'll have a bag of trash, you'll have some gloves to try to keep fingerprints off of a drive, you will have a USB adapter to plug into the laptop, you will have two different types of screwdrivers, so Torx and uh, regular Phillips and flatheads, and then sometimes we have strange sizes or we have some other screws that don't work, and there is a yellow bag. This yellow bag right here has about every kind of screwdriver, adapter, tool that exists for hard drives. Um, and then if you get any dust on anything, you can blow it off, okay? So that's kind of the direction we're going. And then, then I do have some strange sizes, things that come up. So now I'm gonna start with, and then there is the caliper and we'll talk about this tape. I don't, I don't think you have this tape in there. I can cut off as much and give it to people. I keep a roll of it with me. But that's what I use for the tape that has a HVAC type tape. I'm about to dry up. Okay. So you have electrical tape. Um, I have more trash than everybody else has because I sometimes have to double up or do something. Um, projector film used to be used, and this is a bunch of old school type stuff. Um, so if you have one head on one side of a platter, sometimes, and I've got a picture of it somewhere, you can use this by just sliding it in between the head and the platter, and the head can slide across the plastic. So you can basically move your head over the plastic without it doing any damage and it doesn't scratch the platter. Most of the time you're removing a damaged head anyway, so it doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but you can also put a head back into a platter by putting it under the platter and then just taking your head and running it across, okay? All right, so then uh, you also have some 
needle nose pliers to help you uh, add, pull things in and out of the drive. And then I probably don't have, I must have lost or destroyed, up there there. Then you have some tweezers. Permanent marker for marking anything that you need, the lid, the head, the top, whatever goes there. There's a couple of different screw, uh, uh, straws for different things. One of them is if you have to go home at night and your heads are laying on a table, just kind of to preserve them, what the old school method of preserving them before people had clean rooms or had them on all the time would be to cut off a little segment of the straw. So you cut it off, then you take this and you slide it over your heads. And then that way it would preserve the heads. You can even do them individually. So you can do one on one side and one on the other side. So you have two straws holding the two heads together. So this is a preservation method. And there are some people who cut off a little clip of them and use them instead of the head combs I'm going to make. They would just slide them down till they're holding apart uh, the heads in a ramp or something like that and they would keep them there. But for the time being there, I'm only including them because of the old school people who've been doing this for years. Okay, now there are two different sizes in your bag and since I have so much more than anybody else, I'm not sure I can find all the sizes. Uh, there's one that'll be a smaller set of square there. So the smaller set of squares like this these are a little bit thinner, not much, but they're a little bit thinner than the other piece. In the two and a half inch drives, you want thinner material. So I'm keeping different sizes in the hopes that if we need them, we have a different size that we can use. So when I finally use like an Orbitz gum container, I will typically pair these together, okay? When I'm using a ginseng type container like this one, that thick material is going to be more robust so I will want a thicker, a thicker one to use. So I've, I've used half of this one before. So, so basically this is what I'm gonna do. So now I will start by <clears throat> I will start by, all right, if I only need one, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna cut. Now I'll come out a little bit further than I need. So this is a little wider than I would expect it to be. So I'm going to be cutting it down after I'm done. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to just cut down a piece. And I flatten it to make sure that none of the plastic edges or anything are going to do any damage or hit anything. And then I'm going to start kind of shaving it down from here. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make it a little bit thinner because most drives, I don't need them this thick. I'd be surprised in most cases if I need them uh, much thicker than say the base right here on my tweezers. Like those two right there together, that's about how wide I normally need it. Does that make sense? That spot right there. So I'm going to be basically shaving that down as I go. I'm going to start by curving the ends so that I can, I'll start with one and then I'll shorten the other one until I get it where I need it to be. So I'm going to kind of just bite into it a little bit and I'm going to start coming around like I'm making paper dolls with my kids. And I'm just gonna curve one side of it. And then I'm gonna come back down further and shave off a little bit more. Okay? Now, when I fold this, what I'll be looking at is one side to be shorter than the other side. I don't need it too long. I'm gonna put a double piece of foam tape right here. So I'm gonna have a small square that's gonna block this. And then I'm gonna have this piece that's gonna be sticking out. Does that make sense to everybody? So I'm going to fold this here, and you'll see, so that's about as long as I need that to be. So I'm going to make the bottom one a little bit longer. So now that I know where the top one is, I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to just cut this one down, and I'm going to go like this and curve around it. So I have a longer one and a shorter one. Pretty good so far. Now I'm gonna open this up. Now it's still a little wider than I always want it to be, depending on how big the head assembly is. Sometimes you'll have a gimbal that's really big and sometimes you'll have something really small. Um, but the reason I made it longer is this. I'm gonna take a little small square and so I'm gonna cut off a strip of the double face foam tape. Now I'm going to peel one of them off and stick it right here and so I'm gonna make it shorter than it needs to be so it's not sticking out. 
So I'm now pushing that on. Now I'm going to take off the top piece so I can fold it over. I'm going to fold that over. And so now I've got a little bit of a spacer and a bouncy. I don't need to, this side right here is not sticking out. And I need to shorten the other side so it does not stick out because of this reason. When I start moving it around with the tweezers, if those are sticking out, it sticks to the tweezers. So I don't want anything sticking to it at all. So I'll actually sometimes bite a little bit into that uh, plastic so that I've shaved it off. So that there is nothing there for it to stick to. Then I try and make sure that if I hold it with my tweezers that it falls. Because once you get it into the head assembly where you want it, if it sticks to your tweezers, as soon as you do this and you back off, you pull it out. So you do all this work and then you just mess it all up. Does that make sense to everybody? So that's literally what I'm trying to do at this point. This is probably not the best drive for me to demonstrate because this one only has one head. But what I would normally be doing is I would put this in there. I would remove this. I'd get this out of the way because there's also sometimes a little tiny shim underneath the little ramps. If there is a shim there, make sure you take it with you and you keep it because that ramp needs that height or the head will come back and whack against the edge of the plastic. The shim is to raise it up just enough so that the head, so that the head when it slides back out isn't getting caught without hitting that spot right there. Does that make sense to everybody? So if this had two heads, there's only one, there's nothing else here, there's no wire, there's a wire here, there's no wire here. See that? So this only has one head. If it did have two heads, and what I would do is I'd move it there, then my job would be to take this, and I usually try to squeeze it like this. So I'm trying to squeeze and hold it down so that it's closed. I come in through the back, and I'm going to go through the bottom. So now I've got it in between the two arms, right? I can see the bottom through the hole. I don't know if you guys can all see that. I can see the bottom, so I'm going to slide this up. I'm going to make sure that the bottom one goes under the platter. Then, as you approach, you can pull back a little bit. Then the top one will go over. So I've got one on the bottom, one on the top. And then as I slide this down to get it into this spot right here, there's a little weld that will be right there. And then I'll just be passing right by that. Then I'll be sitting on the gimbal and the suspension. So if there was a head there, it would be holding both heads apart from each other. And then they would be free and clear to come all the way out. Does that make sense to everybody there? Now, because it is one head, there is one thing, one other one that I make. Because if there was one head, my entire job is this. And people think for some reason if there's one head that it's not that big a deal. You can just slide it on the platter and slide it right off. I see videos of people doing it all the time. Chinese people do it all day long. But... My opinion is the more money that you want to spend on donor drives, then you can do whatever you want. But if the head, if you're respectful of the head and you take care of the head as good as possible, if you imagine that at the edge of the platter you have a head and you bring your head to the edge of the platter, as it comes off, it'll scrape the edge of the platter. When you go to put it back on, you have the same problem. So you want to isolate that. You want to keep the space just enough to keep that from happening. So what I would do is i take another strip and I'll just cut a strip right down the, the side. This one I don't have to be quite as cautious with because the width and stuff doesn't make that big of a difference. So all I'm doing at this point is curving the end to make kind of like a foot out of this. And then I fold one third one way and one third the other way. And now I have what I call a Z. Right? Then I take this, and if this was one head on the other side of the platter, what I would have done, I would have, again, turned this, put the head on the edge of the platter. This drive's been damaged pretty bad. Uh, then I take this ramp out, and now I just want to be very judicial in getting this head out of here as safe as possible. So then I take this, and I put it on the bottom. I just push this in here. I go underneath the platter. I have the head on the bottom so I can tell by its wire. So I just slide right down till I'm in that space. Believe it or not, most of the time the amount of the space of this is enough to keep the head off. But I still kind of hold it and make sure that the head is just going to come off. And I want to stop 
I, when I'm putting it on the head, I'm putting it here to stop before the slider. So the ferrite, where the ferrite is, I don't want to mess with the ferrite and where that is. I don't want to break the head off. So I'm just stopping on the gimbal, not on the head assembly itself. Okay? So I'm just stopping it enough so that I can slide it in and out and keep it safe. That's all I'm trying to do. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay? I'm just trying to be kind to the head. And then once I've done the disassembly, I'll do the exact same thing for the reassembly. You will have some situations where there's two sets, there's only three heads, you'll need one of these on the top, and then you'll have a bottom one, and you'll have to do them together. So you'll also notice I've made the bottom one longer than the whole kit itself, so that if there was one, it's not in the way. See, see what I mean? So if this one was on a top set of heads, by the time I've installed this, it's long enough that I will be able to still have the handle without pushing into the other one. So that's why I made it that way. Okay? So uh, you can also have the opposite, which is instead of a head on the bottom like I have, you can have a head on the top. So if I have a head on the top, I'm doing exactly the same thing, but I would have come across the top here. I would have done this, gone in here. I would have come down here, and I would hold that head here, and then I would bring it out. You can have two on top and then one head on the top. You can have any combination of these. So you just have to know by looking at the wires which ones you have, and you have to compensate for that each time you do it. Okay? So why is it that you're moving the platter when you're moving the heads? So you do not want the heads to scrape across the platter. If it's moving, then it will still keep the head intact, and it won't do any damage. But if you're moving the head across the platter and you're not spinning the platter, then there is no friction. It'll stick to it. It'll start to do damage to it. So anytime that I'm moving this head, now most of the time, unless it was parked in the center, I'm only moving it this far. Uh, if it's parked in the center, then it would be like this, and I would do this, and I would spin the, this while I move to the edge. So I want to keep it moving. The drive's expecting it to be moving in the process. So I'm just trying to keep the head from being damaged and doing damage to the platter. And that's how you would move the platter without touching it with your fingers? Yes. I just put this in here and I will typically either find the hole or do it here or I'll do it with even with the screwdriver but you got to make sure that the bits don't fall out of the screwdriver onto the platter. So I tend to do it with tweezers most of the time. I'm, I mean it doesn't take a lot of force. So typically anytime I'm moving it that's what I'm doing and I'm just trying to make a smooth motion. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just enough for me to move back and forth. And you'll see once you start trying to do it. And if you try to slide it otherwise, it would do some problems. Now, if you have a situation where a head is stuck, like there in the middle, there is a possibility that you can make a really long tool like this that you could reach it the whole way and then possibly pop it off without doing any other damage. Most of the time, a head stuck to the platter, if, I, if it was stuck right there, most of the time if I just make a very smooth turn like this, it will pop free and it'll be fine. But occasionally, the head breaks off and sticks to the platter. So if it feels like it's too hard and I can't get it to move at all, that's what I'll do is I'll make something longer. And uh, HD Surgery guys did make one of these things where it has a thumb screw. And so if your heads were stuck out here, you could put it on, you can slide it into place, and you can do this little thumb screw and it pushes them out. And a piece of metal slides out this way and lifts the heads up. So those are your options. Okay, now we're going to give you drives and you're going to format them and put data on them and then you're going to break your drive. And then I want it broken down to bare metal. I want you to take everything out of the drive till there is nothing you can remove and lay it out on your static map. That's it. And then we're going to reassemble it. Okay? So we're going to separate the platters and being on top of each other? No, you're going to use the tool to remove the platters together, right? And if you have some that have the metal brackets in it, we're gonna have to do it with tape, so when one of you runs into that, I'm going to demonstrate on your drive, and then you're going to do it again, okay? Okay, those three boxes, yes ma'am. And there's a variety of drives, one yep. for each person of each brand, so at some point in time they can all get a brand, but sure. randomly you can just give out Mm -hmm. You want to hold on to these or do you throw them aside? Yeah, for now. Yeah. Cool.